Hello and welcome to the Man Cave here at Wistful Vistas, beautiful suburban San Diego, California. This is going to be a fun video for those of you nostalgia buffs. I'm forced to be a nostalgia buff at my age. I hope you enjoy the journey as much as I have making the journey, have had making the journey with hopefully a few more stops along the route uh, planned out for me. But we're going to look at a couple of uh, different generations of Bell helmet today. I have here a Bell Race Star. This is uh, one of the helmets I wear. It's a beautiful design. Just so happens that I've got a long connection with Bell Helmets. Growing up in Paramount, California, the Bell Helmet was started in Bell, California. Uh, Bell Speed Shop was a very famous local hot rod shop, and they started out with these helmets. I have no idea. Uh, they're still a California company, at least design-wise have no idea where they're making them. Sure, it's not in the USA and probably not in California, that's for sure. But uh, just as a for instance, I toured the Ferrari factory a couple of years ago and they had Bell helmets going back to the 1950s that the Ferrari drivers were wearing. And they were quite popular, drag racing and sports car racing. I raced sports cars with California Sports Car Club uh, back in the 1970s and we're going to start off taking a look at that 1970s helmet that I wore. I've kept it all this time so I thought I'd share it with you and contrast it a little bit with this uh, more modern example. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about them. And uh, welcome here to the Man Cave at uh, Wistful Vista's beautiful suburban San Diego, California. What we're going to do today is take a look at a few Bell helmets through the years. I just happen to recall that uh, I've had this particular lid sitting in my uh, office for actually quite a while. And the gear that went with it, my Nomex glove, re oh re oh re as White Fang used to say. Yes, friends, we had Velcro back in the 70s. <laughs> this is Nomex. That's my Nomex glove. I was a sports car racer with uh, Sports Car Club of America, Southern California region. It's my old balaclava hoodie, you'd call it nowadays, in uh, knit and uh, woven Nomex. In any case, this is about Bell helmets. This is a Bell helmet from the late 1960s, early 1970s. This was hand painted by yours truly. You can see that this is a battle scarred old veteran. And uh, I was very proud of this when I got it because it was one of the very first full face helmets uh, that they introduced. I was at the Ferrari factory in 2015 and looking at Bell helmets that they had on display there going all the way back to the 1950s. Bell having started in Bella, California, Bell, California, pardon me, which was just up the road from Paramount, which is where I grew up. Uh, so I was very familiar with Bell and Bell Auto Parts and their helmets. This was, as I say, one of the very first of their Snell approved helmets. They used the D-ring latching, as we still do today. You can see it's not a particularly aerodynamic shape, although it felt that way to us. At full speed, this helmet would literally try to uh, lift up and pop off over the top of your head. So uh, they were in the early stages of understanding aerodynamics. In fact, the first wing that I had on my race car was uh, quite a revelation. I'll try to find a photo of that and post it up for you. But this got pretty chipped up and rock bit over time. Uh, you can see we used to, before full-faced helmets, you could tell drivers uh, by the bugs in their teeth or a couple of scars from rocks and whatnot being knocked up over the top of you. Helmet construction is hand-laid fiberglass. Hand-laid fiberglass, the interior would be familiar even in the newer phase of helmet construction today. That is, it's foam, high-density foam, and uh, lower-density, lightweight foam materials that uh, come into 
contact with your head as you're actually wearing the helmet. So that and the D-ring strap to hold it in place would be very familiar even in uh, this day and age. No uh, chin curtain here and the aerodynamics were not all that great. Now we go to a side-by-side -side comparison. This is a 2017 Bell Race Star helmet right next to that early 1970s Bell Top Tex. The Bell uh, helmet here is of carbon fiber construction. I'm not sure if this will actually show up on the video. Yes, it does. There's the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber construction. You'll also note its aerodynamic shape in comparison to that 1970 unit. When we were in the cars, these helmets would actually lift up on our heads. Uh, you could feel the helmet lifting. They didn't understand a lot about the aero back in those days. So much more aerodynamic design. The other thing that's going on with this helmet that the earlier helmet completely lacks is any kind of air venting. So the, this helmet has several vents and this older version has actually zero vents. This later bell has also uh, got its safety approval ratings. In this case we have DOT, the USA Department of Transportation, and once again, we can zoom in and see that tiny little Snell approved down there. Snell is named after a uh, American race driver who was actually mortally injured in a race car accident due to a head injury. And his family funded the foundation that uh, became named after him called Snell Foundation. And Snell has been rating and approving helmets ever since. This helmet has a chin curtain. That's this little flex piece of material right there. And not only does it help out aerodynamically, but it also helps out from a sound level point of view, helping to seal the noise out of the helmet a little bit more. It also incorporates a much further reach in the uh, neck padding, again, helping for aerodynamics and for the sound deadening much quieter environment than the earlier helmet. The other piece of technology you get that they didn't really have in the late 60s, early 70s is this pull to release, quick release padding. So should a rider be injured, knock on wood, it would never happen to you or I, anyhow. <laughs> we hope not, we trust not. But you can remove that padding without moving the rider's neck or head too much. Makes it easier for the rescue crew. Last thing to mention about this helmet, safety-wise, again a technology that uh, would have been uh, understandable but uh, beyond the engineering capability perhaps in the late 60s, early 70s. This helmet has what's called MIPS, M-I-P-S technology, which is multi-impact protection system. And there's two linings, there's actually two linings in this helmet. The red one here, which I hope you can see, and then as I pull this cloth back, the black one here. The idea is that this black one can actually move around a certain number of degrees in any direction, 360 degrees of direction. And what this is supposed to do is allow your head and therefore your brain time to decelerate from an impact in any given direction. So just another technological advance compared to that earlier model. All right, family and friends, thanks for joining me down this little uh, by road of nostalgia through to the future world of today, comparing two bell helmets separated by just about uh, 50 years in technological process and uh, our engineering understanding of what makes a great helmet. I'll probably hang on to this old bell until I'm gone. It has a proud place in my office and then my heirs can throw it away.
<laughs> or donate it to a museum perhaps if they care that much. I'm sure there's plenty of them around. Again, thank you, sign off, and whatever you're doing out there, riding a motorcycle, driving a race car, be safe. <laughs>